Halloween with Craig Roberts and Christian Young? Could a church building be covered in cobwebs and used as an invitation to come in? How should Christians respond to customs, traditions and stories that have associations with false religions, demonic powers and evil? Is it all about the occult and to be avoided at all costs? Or is it kids, funny outfits and junk food? What should the posture of our church be? Craig Roberts is the CEO of Sydney's Anglican Youth Works and the former minister of Neutral Bay Anglican Church. Christian Young is a director of student and community care at Sydney Missionary and Bible College. I'll put my cards on the table first. I've never done anything about Halloween. I've had my head firmly in the sand, but it's coming up again this October. And I was walking around the suburb last Halloween and amazed at the community engagement. And I just wanted to think, is it redeemable? Uh, Christian, can we start with your pastor's heart? Why would you say engage it all rather than just let it all go past? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess um, many years ago, my husband and I have been um, in ministry in Lisco for a long time. Mm. And for many years, we were in the let's just forget it's happening mm -hmm. kind of camp. Um, Firmly with me. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much with you, yeah. Yes, but um, I don't know whether the, the watchers or listeners know, but we... Uh, Lithgow is, is fairly well known for an annual Halloween festival mm -hmm. where they block off Main Street and they have uh, cosplayers and um, street fair and a whole lot of things. And we just found that uh, more and more children were getting involved with it. Primary schools were taking children on walking tours of the Main Street and all those sorts of things. And we just, we, we felt that there was a need for us to engage mm. somehow with it. Um, and I'm, I was saying, I led a mission team to Lithgow in 1998 mm. and then came here to Annandale and uh, it was wild Halloween in Lithgow 20 years ago compared yeah. to here and so you've been ahead of the game on this for a long time. Well I think our, yes personally we were actually behind the game although the town was ahead of the game mm. in that way yeah. So Craig Halloween is, is it evil is it permissible beneficial harmful? All of the above. Dominic, I'm, I'm thinking particularly uh, 1 Corinthians 9 and 1 Corinthians 10. Uh, 1 Corinthians 9, we've got Paul saying he'll do anything. He'll become anything. To the Jews like the Jews, to the wind, to the ghosts like the ghosts. To... So that some might be saved. Um, but we have to read 1 Corinthians 9 in its context and we know that what comes after chapter 9 is, or well, chapter 10 where he uh, writes to the Corinthians about it being careful how you exercise the freedom you have in Christ and in particular whilst everything is permissible not everything is beneficial and we must be uh, aware, our pastor's heart must be attuned to the weaker brother the weaker sister so uh, we want to be careful how we tread in this space, but I think there's some great opportunities to both uh, build up the young people in our church and also to reach our community. Let's come to those in a moment, but both of you, as you've embarked in mission in this space, have had Christians on either side of that debate of where it's permissible and where it's beneficial. Let's start with you, Kirsten. Well, we, yeah, we've, we've had uh, parents in our children's ministry who love the idea of dress-ups and our, our kids love the idea of dress-ups. And so for them, Halloween was this wonderful opportunity of community building um, where you have neighbourhoods out together, street parties, people getting involved with visiting their neighbours, getting to know their neighbours and as part of that the kids were dressing up and going around getting uh, mm -hmm. lollies and things. And then on the other end of the spectrum we had parents who were very well aware of the spiritual reality of, mm. of Halloween and how there was a glorification in a sense of what was death and uh, dark and evil. And, and for those parents it was actually a matter of conscience to remove the kids from those celebrations and to say no 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 we're, we're the people of light and therefore we shouldn't be involved in this mm. and so as we came with our children's ministry we came sort of into this context of helping the parents who wanted to engage with their communities 
to see the opportunities of evangelism in that space, but then also wanting to honour the heart of the parents who loved their children and didn't want their kids to be what they saw as being um, put into a dangerous position mm. of glorifying what shouldn't be glorified. Mm. So how do you navigate it as a senior minister, Craig, in a way other than my bury my head in the sand strategy? <laughs> yeah, I, I can think of at least three groups of parents from my time at Neutral Bay. Uh, the, the first group, local families who saw what was happening, not so much in Neutral Bay, but there were two streets in Mossman, one, one of the wealthiest suburbs mm. uh, in, in Sydney. They didn't shut the main street, but they may as well have. Mm. Every house got into it. Um, the, the homeowners would often take the day off work to, to prep their houses, dress up in all sorts of ghoulish and gory costumes. So there were some uh, local families uh, from churches would take their kids down um, Holt Avenue and Spencer Road, I think they were. Um, then there were some American expat families who were with us. And it was interesting hearing them talk about Halloween in America. It wasn't so uh, death focused and, and ghouls and, and goblins and, and, and the, the dark side. It was just a chance just to pumpkins and pumpkins lollies. and dress up as fifties rockers or a superhero, yeah. not necessarily go straight to the undead. Mm. And then there was a third group who, like your um, parishioners at, at Lithgow, who saw it actually as, as participating in the demonic and were very cautious mm. about uh, their children in particular and the church in general engaging at all with it. And so as a senior minister, as I try and navigate these different approaches, uh, I can recall one family in particular from the third camp w were just dead against it. And as we talked about how we as a church might approach it, and we, we might tease this out later, I was able to agree with this family that they would stay at home and they would stay at home on their knees mm -hmm. praying for what the church was doing. Mm -hmm. And that was a, a great example to me of unity within the diverse body of Christ, mm. all coming together that the body might be built up and the head Jesus might be honoured. Mm. So I, I take it there's three, broadly speaking, potential pragmatic strategies. One, the do nothing, bury your head in the sand. Two is recognise that there are kids in our church who want to go lolly collecting or want to do something mm. to do with lollies and they're not that interested in the um, the spiritual issues or the ghoulishness or anything like that. And then there's actually thinking about an outreach to how can we capitalize on it for, for Jesus. Well, let's take approach two and approach three. And <laughs> which did you do in Lithgow? Well, I think um, we, for many years, we kind of went along with approach one of, uh, because what, what happened with the festival was because the festival was on a Saturday, it, it drew away the neighbourhood aspect of Halloween mm -hmm. and took it to the main street. So instead of having streets full of children um, trick-or-treating, they all went trick-or-treating up and down the main street. Mm -hmm. And so we... we Just left the Anglican shop closed. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was, that was a, what happened a bit later. But, but uh, initially, there was a, a group of, of Christians from our church who had a prayer meeting in the church, which was one street away from the festival, and they just prayed for the whole festival. And then we thought that using the opportunity of an outreach being a, a light in a dark space was actually a really useful thing. And so we organised uh, a specific... So it's taking on ghoulishness, light well, in dark. Yeah. yeah, I think the, the approach that we, we thought about... It took a bit of a cue from C.S. Lewis's idea of the the deeper magic, uh, the sense in which um, we wanted to think about the message that Halloween was kind of portraying was that there was community, there was fun, there was enjoyment, but it was couched within this very dark kind of space. And so we wanted to say well, there's actually a deeper magic 
hear that the gospel is is good news and light and joy you know in, in this dark space and so one the first uh, back in 2017 we organized an outreach event in our church uh, while the festival was going we um, asked Stuart Robinson who was an illusionist to come out and so we had a magic show uh -huh. in in the church um, one street away from the festival and we sold tickets for it and we filled the church um, in the middle of this festival. Um, there were some complaints when he gave a gospel presentation from people who were not expecting it. Um, but it was a really good, it, it was us stepping into the community and saying here is something fantastic to think about in the middle of this. And then the year after that, the Anglicare shop opened directly in the main street. And so we went again with that concept of the deeper magic, an idea of sanctuary in the middle of, you know, taking from the medieval church, the, the concept of the church being a place of light in the middle of the community. And so we, we had an outreach activity that happened within the shop. And we used the Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe as the theme. Oh, really? Mm. Craig, you yeah. called it All Hallows' Eve. We did. Yeah, we, we, we had two, um, I guess, um, philosophical um, uh, motives for wanting to engage with Halloween. Uh, the first, well, Halloween's on the 31st of October. All Saints Day is on the 1st of November. And the night before uh, was, was known um, in a previous era as All Hallows' Eve. Which is, I guess, where we get that name Where from. we get the name ha uh, Halloween. Halloween. Yeah. And All, All Saints' Day was a chance to, to thank God for the departed saints, those who have gone to glory. And so we um, wanted to steal it back. We wanted to redeem Halloween. So we were very clear to call it not a Halloween celebration, but an All Hallows' Eve celebration. And the, the second... Um, uh, Did people, anybody get that distinction yeah. apart from the highly literate Christians? Well, no, because we made it a feature of what we did in the church in the afternoon, the early right. evening, yeah. um, to explain this is not about death and gore. This is about life and life to the full. Um, right. So it actually gave you the, the way in to the gospel. Correct. We're, we're educating you about the yeah. real history of this that's, event. Yeah. That, that, that's right. And, and the second... I guess, uh, philosophical approach we, we took was, and yes, we're coming up to Halloween. We're also in footy season. I think footy gives us a great metaphor here. If you're a little guy and there's a big guy running at you, you are not going to stop him cold in his tracks. The best you can do is use his momentum to push him over the sideline or move him to where you want him to go. So we thought, let's see if we can use all this hype and excitement in the local area around Halloween, like it was at Lithgow, how can we leverage that for gospel good? A bit like Paul at the Acropolis in Acts 17, when he walks around, he sees these temples to every uh, deity. He could have got up and said, you blokes are just having an each way bet and you're all wrong, let me tell you how it is. He didn't say that, he, he, he started, he said, men of Athens, I see you are very religious. And I can imagine his hearers might have thought, yeah, this guy's onto something. We'll, we'll listen to him some more. And he moved them from the known to the unknown. They, he moved them from what they knew to what they didn't know. And he took them to the statue of the, of the unknown God. And he told them about the unknown God, uh, mm -hmm. the Lord Jesus. And we wanted to take the momentum in our culture and see if we could bend and subvert it and, and steal it back toward the original intent of All Hallows Eve by explaining its origins and explaining we don't have to fear the ghouls, the goblins, the gore, the, the, the undead, because we've got Jesus and he's alive and he offers life to all who come after him. Mm. Now... Spinning off from what you've just said, one of my friends has talked about um, uh, on a Facebook post having cut out cardboard tombstones with Bible verses about the victory of Jesus over darkness and death. And uh, I thought, oh, that's an interesting idea. And then I thought, how are the parents of our suburb going to react to the kind of like tombstones like that? Mm. It, all, it all suddenly becomes, we've just been looking at spiders and then it suddenly mm. becomes a little bit more real when you're mm. looking at 
gravestones. Mm. What do you think of that idea? Would you do that? Would you go that far? If, if I had a, a church that looked like the kind of church that should have a graveyard next to it, then I, I, I think it would work. Um, and people are coming to a church. Um, we want to be clear on who we are and what we stand for. So I'd give it a go mm-hmm. if I had the, the, the right space and location for it. Kristen? Oh, look, Lithgow Main Street has decorations like carts with mannequins with sheets looking like bodies, so... Um, <laughs> You'd still be pretty tame. Gravestones are kind of tame by comparison. They, have, uh, have, they had uh, workshops up at the high school teaching the students how to put zombie, zombie makeup on, so um, cardboard... Um, <laughs> That's just nothing. So, there are just wusses here. Well, yeah. Look, it's, it's telling people about the hope and the joy. And I think that's that's part of what we want to leverage, isn't it, Craig? Like what you were talking about, people are excited about Halloween. Mm-hmm. They love the thrill of it and the joy of it. And as Christians, we want to come along with there is joy in this gospel because there's there's this deep and real truth that you can know that if you put your trust in Jesus, death has no fear for you mm. because you have that offer of life eternal afterwards. Um, so, you know, ways that we can, can say, yeah, that's fun, but here's a, here's a more exciting fun. Um, not necessarily fun, but, he, but here's a more lasting and solid truth and hope that you can have in Jesus. Mm. Mm. I should say that couple that I spoke of who were again it um, at church and once I'd explained to them that we weren't celebrating Halloween we were celebrating All Hallows Eve and it was very clear in all of our, our signage um, and in our, our comms they moved from being dead against it to being happy that we were doing it even though they in good conscience wanted no part of it which is why they said they were happy to stay at home on their knees and praying for us mm. Mm. now um i guess there's another question of just how much effort you put into everything you know mm. <laughs> and and so we've got a big effort in christmas we've got all these different things and have we got the energy to to pull this off mm. um uh you sound like you were driven to it by the fact that it was such a big thing culturally, and in neutral bay as well, it was such a big thing culturally. As you've engaged with other ministers, mm. what would your advice be to some, to someone in an area where it's not such a huge huge thing as in your space? I think the key of hospitality is a really good hook to be thinking about, and it doesn't need to be a bigger than Ben Hur event. Uh, in your church, but helping the the lay members of your church to consider hospitality as a way of opening the door to the gospel Mm -hmm. is a really good idea, I think. So if you have members of your, so if you've got a church that's away from the centre of everything, the church building doesn't get particularly affected by the surrounding Halloween, individual church members can organise something in their street to be welcoming and hospitable and, you know, share some of the good news of Jesus through their hospitality. Um, it's it's not always... Like, there are, I've seen on the internet, particularly from America, you know, the, the internet jokes about the kids who went to a house expecting candy and then received a tract. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's all they got. And so their response to that was, oh, this is a horrible house, you know. But but a, a welcoming and warm hospitality that, that helps people Well, you gave them a, a free sausage or something like that. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they, they get welcomed. So they, get, they get treated as people who matter because they do matter to God. Mm-hmm. And that's that's a, a principle. So I'd say hospitality mm-hmm. is a good... Craig, thing. your yeah. advice for, for those of us who it's not quite as hot as in your territory. Yeah, I, I think if it's, if it's not... As hot, if, if there's no energy and momentum uh, around Halloween, I wouldn't beat yourself let up. Let it go past. Yeah. I'd, I'd just let it go through to the keeper. Mm-hmm. Um, don't, don't beat yourself up mm. over it. Um, I'm, I wonder whether uh, we're, we're called to make the most of every opportunity. I'm wondering how much of an opportunity is there in, in that particular context. There was opportunity aplenty where I was, so we seized it. But 
if it's not a big deal in your neck of the woods, I'd, I'd just let it go past you. Yeah. Let it mm-hmm. go past. One cool idea I noticed that you did that I that I liked was um, uh, fluffy toys. Yes. Speak to me about fluffy toys. <laughs> well, I have to I have to give the credit to Stephanie Sears, who was working. Well, she still works with Anglicare in that, and so part of the part of the shops. Uh, focus in that space was to provide a light and encouraging and safe space for people to come into in the middle of the street festival. So outside there were zombies wandering up and down the street and there were people in with blood on their faces and axes in their heads and all sorts of things. Um, and and the, we, we had a space where the children could come in and receive a little bit of sanctuary in the middle of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and we did get quite a few tearful children coming up whose parents were from out of town and they got a little bit more than they bargained for. They're just a bit overwhelming though. Yeah, the well, it, it, well it was a bit nightmarish for some of them, yeah. yeah. Um, and so the space, we, we deliberately had no uh, spiders or pumpkins or ghouls or anything like that. It was all very much an, a Narnia theme. So yeah. we had the, um, so back in 2019, we had all of the, the windows were done up like the snow and the lamppost and mm-hmm. the, the wardrobe and everything. And and we brought people in and uh, the senior minister at the time read through one of the picture books of, of mm-hmm. uh, Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. We had colouring in for the kids to do. And instead of handing out lollies, um, Lots of people had thankfully donated lots of little tiny toys to Anglicare and well, so they were just handed out. Fluffy toys breed. And oh, so they do, you, yes. You, I mean, so we're... donate them to Anglicare and then your shops can give them away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was great. So we just went through bags and bags and bags of them and word got out up and down the street and so we had all of these children coming in wanting little fluffy toys and instead of the chocolate. And so they got something better than what they were anticipating. Instead of getting a, a, a chocolate bar, they got a, a something they could keep and take home and, and wrapped, there's a bow wrapped around the necks of the little toys with a little card that links to our church website and mm. things like that. And so it was, it was low key, but it gave them that opportunity to come back later. My guests on The Pastor's Heart, Kristen Young. She is the Director of Student and Community Care at Sydney Missionary and Bible College and Craig Roberts, CEO of Sydney's Anglican Youth Works and also the former Minister of Neutral Bay Anglican Church. My name is Dominic Still. You've been with us on The Pastor's Heart and we will look forward to your company next Tuesday afternoon.